Hi everyone, it's Emma, this is Emma Rosen Books. Today I wanted to film for you a tag that I was tagged in by the Mummy Bookworm. And this looks so much fun, so I wanted to do it as soon as I could. This is the OMG This Song booktube tag. I love music as much as books. More than books? As much as books. <laughs> so to be able to combine my twin loves, if only I could film this video at the beach. Weather's not good enough. That would combine all of my loves. Basically for this tag there are 10 categories and for each one you pick a book and a song. So, right, so the first category is My Jam, a song you must listen to every time it comes on no matter how old or how many times you've listened to it or equally a book that you'll never get sick of. So, for the song I found this so hard because, well I said to my husband like what is my jam, what is the song that I'll always sing along to when it comes on and he just kind of went, well, everything? <laughs> so, I don't have a specific jam. Uh, yeah, I'm, it, I have no shame about singing along to anything in the middle of shops or wherever, which is why I'm choosing not to lip sync this. There were lots of songs to pick from and in the end I decided to go for a sea shanty. A doctor's fire and a dustman's love Sitting there picking on a chicken on a rock that was uh, Chicken on a Raft by Cyril Tawney, who's an ex-Navy man. Chicken on a Raft means uh, eggs on toast, by the way, in uh, Navy slang, so. Um, the book that I've picked is... The Princess Bride. Now, I'm claiming that this is my jam and I it never gets old. Well, the film has never got old. The book, I have only read once for the first time this year, but I promise you, this will never get old and I'll read it lots and lots of times. Second category is throwback. So this is a song that reminds you of the cringest time of your life. Well, <laughs> when I was, when I was in year nine, so about 13, we had this languages teacher, French and Spanish teacher who was getting married. I came up with this plan and I always drag people along with me it seems when I come up with these stupid schemes. And my plan was that <laughs> I rewrote the words to Bette Midler's, well I don't, it's by, not by Bette Midler, I don't actually know who did it, but I knew it from Bette Midler's Divine Miss M album and it's going to the chapel. And I rewrote the words so it's specifically about this teacher. I persuaded my best friend to come with me and we went and looked for him first thing in the morning before registration. We went up and knocked on his door and went, oh sir, we want to, um, we, we have something for you, we have a present for you or something like that and then proceeded to just sing at him and I did most of the singing with my friend just going whoa <laughs> in a little bit and it was so mortifying but I'd committed to <laughs> God. He actually was really touched and we um, just threw the piece of paper at him and legged it. Gee I really love you and we're gonna get married going to the chapel of love. A book that reminds me of a similar time. I couldn't think of a book that was cringy, but it reminds me of a similar time in my life. And I'm gonna go for that one, for The Merchant of Venice. Because at the same time, in our English class, we were learning The Merchant of Venice, and we used to like do plays of it and all that stuff too. And um, we had a student teacher go through The Merchant of Venice with us. And what she liked to do was every scene, once you'd read through it, we had to draw a tension graph, so like a sketch graph of the tension rising and falling throughout the scene. And I get what she was trying to do, it's a good idea and I'm sure it's a technique that's employed, you know, by other people. But it was when every scene, draw a tension graph, and a lot of us weren't entirely sure what a tension graph was anyway, and kind of plotting, oh yes, oh it got a bit more tense there, oh it's a little bit less, I mean honestly. And we were all just so bored of this technique and it just makes me think of all the times at school where a teaching device is used that actually makes the book more boring. Right, the next category is replay. A recent song you have on repeat right now and a recent favourite book. Now the problem with this is that I have three children. The only, really, the only time I really listen to recent music is if I'm driving somewhere. Uh, you know, I struggled even to think of anything that was released this year and so realistically I don't have any recent songs on repeat because 
I don't think I even know any recent songs from since I've had the baby because I don't really go anywhere to have the radio on in the car. So what I decided to go for is a recent song that we listen to a lot. It's not super recent, I think it's 2016. And the reason we listen to this is because the kids latched onto it. I have no idea why, it's not the kind of song kids would normally go for. And they've come up with a game where they do like a question and answer to it. And the song is Human by Rag and Bone Man. And they have this thing where one of them goes, um, one of them go, I'm only human, and the other kid goes, after all, and then they keep doing that. It, it, they find it entertaining, I have no idea. I'm only human, after all, I'm only human, after all, don't put your blame on me. The recent read I'm going to go for, again, it's not a new book, I actually don't read that many new books, partially because I'm trying to read, like, all my two TBRs, um, and also because I tend to buy books at charity shops, so it's not very often that I'll go to a bookshop and buy a new book. I do every now and again, but it's, it's not very often. So I'm just going to go for a book that, um, that I have been recommending to everybody. That's the best thing I've read in a long time, um, and it's another one that I will read over and over again. And that is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Again, I read this at the beginning of the year. It's so clever and haunting um, and thought-provoking. Loved it. So that's going to be my recent favourite. Right, the next category I found really hard. This category is Gets Me. So it says, this song is me or this book is me in book form. The song was easier. I've chosen what I would call my song. Wait, the reason I like this song is that I relate so much to the lyrics and not... I should tell you what the song is. The song is Perfect by Fairground Attraction. Eddie Reader is my favourite singer of all time. Um, she's the lead singer of Fairground Attraction. So I love everything she's ever done. Her Robert Burns album is awesome. And Perfect, although it's a bit tacky, to me, when I hear the words, I know it's about kind of only accepting the best in love, but to me, I always think it's only accepting the best in life. You know, always just, second best isn't good enough. You've got to live your best life. Life is too short to play silly games. I promised myself I won't do that again. It's got to be perfect. Now, the book I've gone for, oh, I just couldn't think of anything. I couldn't think of any book that just sort of captured me. And I was felt. I went trawled through every book I could think of and I just couldn't think of an example. Just, yeah, oh, I don't know. So then I thought, well, maybe I could go for a character that's very like me. So that's what I did in the end. And I know it's a bit of a cop out, but I just couldn't think of a book that captured meanness. <laughs> so I went for um, Hermione. And again, oh, I wish I was choosing something like really clever or, but the character Hermione is really like me. Um, when I was at school, I wasn't very popular. I was opinionated. I'd spent all my time in the library. I was a know-it-all. I'd always have my hand up straight away about everything. I have frizzy hair, um, naturally, not right now. And um, I'm, I still have some of those characteristics, but obviously I'm now an adult. If there was an adult Hermione written, it would be me. The next category is what? <laughs> and it's weird but I like it. A unique book that stuck out to you for whatever reason, then equally a song the same. Now the song, this is a song I came across this week. This is Sting and Shaggy. Don't make me wait. And I played this to my husband and went, guess who this is? And he listened and went, is that Sting? Yeah. Is that Shaggy? <laughs> yes. I mean, I don't know if this is genius or awful, but I like it. I think it's brilliant, actually. <laughs> I think that's the conclusion I've come to. The book I've gone for. I actually bought this before I had kids. I don't really know why. I think it just entertained me and I thought if I ever do have kids, this is the kind of book that I'm going to read to them. 
The book, I found it at a car boot sale, is <laughs> the story of the little mole who knew it was none of his business. The story is about a mole who gets pooed on and then spends the entire book trying to figure out who pooed on him. <laughs> I mean... Good! Um, next we've got Let's Go. So this is um, the best pump up song for workouts or just life and a book that inspired you as well. The song I'm going to go for is something that just has been my pump up song for the last maybe six months. Um, and it's actually probably not the kind of genre I normally listen to. I'm normally into kind of rock, indie, folk music. And this is more dancey, poppy kind of vibe which generally isn't really me, but this is um, Clean Bandit, Rather Be. I love this song. If you gave me a chance, I would take it. It's a shot in the dark, but I'll make it. And the book to go with that is one of my daughter's books. Somebody bought her this for Christmas. And this has become a firm family favourite. I like it. My daughter likes it. My son likes it. My son borrows it all the time, actually. He's found um, reading the stories really interesting. It's good night stories for rebel girls. I haven't read the second one, but I'd love to. And actually, there's a boys' version has come out too. I forget what it's called. It's like... No, I don't know. But the same publisher, Quercus, and it's... Um, um, it's the idea is it's fairy tales, but they're fairy tales about real people. So on the front cover, it says you've got... Um, mm -mm -mm, Cleopatra, um, Nina Simone, Coco Chanel, Jane Austen. And it's brought up some amazing conversations for my kids saying, oh, I didn't know women could do that. Next up is Chill. Favourite chill, relaxing song or a book you'd curl up with and read on a rainy day. So the song I'm going to go for is Cavatina um, by John Williams, but I'm going to um, uh, do the version that's played by Stan Miles. I was kind of tempted to try and play it. I can. I've, mm, so my dad played this song. And uh, it was just my favourite to sit and listen to him playing this. Um, it's a classical guitar piece. Um, it's the theme from The Deer Hunter. I used to be able to play it when I was a teenager and I've just forgotten how to play it. But to me, if I'm like working and I want some background music or just, you know, chilling out, I need something that hasn't got words and I love classical guitar music. And this one is just, I love it because it's got so much um, kind of nostalgic links for me. Um, so yeah. No, sorry, it's by Stan Myers, and I'm going to do it played by John Williams, being brain dead. I mean, you can't lip sync, or sing, or dance. Should have just, uh, you know. And the book I'm going to go for is this one. Um, this is the kind of thing that I like to read to chill out. So Tim Winton's Land's Edge. I actually haven't read any of his other books, and I. I probably should. Um, this is basically just stories about coastal rambles and writing and so it's the kind of thing that I absolutely adore. <laughs> For number eight we have Addicting, Guilty Pleasure Song, one that's catchy and addicting but not a whole lot of substance, or equally Guilty Pleasure Trashy Fast Light Read. This song came out when I was at university and it was constantly on like music TV and I fell in love with it, so much so that it was my ringtone, and so if my phone went off during lectures, which it frequently did because I'm terrible at remembering to put my phone on silent, this is what would play, and it was really embarrassing. This is um, Dragostia Dinte by Ozone. Hello. Salut. And the book that I'm going for, I don't actually have a copy of it because I listened to it on audiobook, is Twilight. I want to hate it. You know, you've got this... The whole relationship with, you know, I'm so dangerous and sparkly and she's all like, oh, I can't survive without you and all, I should hate it. It's just ex everything that's wrong with books. But it's just really good. I read all of them, I watched all the films. Finally, the last category is nostalgia. Um, so a throwback you look back on fondly, 
slash a book that you read forever ago that you look back on fondly or remind you of a happy childhood time. The song I'm going to go for is Jackie Wilson's Reap Petite. Um, when I was little, my granddad, who's sadly no longer with us, he had a pub and they had like a screen up at the bar in the pub. And at the time, so this was like late 80s, so I would have been like maybe four, this song was out and playing on music TV a lot. And um, uh, it had this like plasticine version of Jackie Wilson that his face goes kind of all funny and it's like a, like a claymation type thing. And I was obsessed with the video. I would just be absolutely transfixed on it. And um, yeah, it just takes me back to sitting in that pub and watching the music video and being like, <gasps> but what? Oh, oh, oh. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. Can't do that. <laughs> and the book that I'm picking is Carbonell by Barbara Slay. Um, this was one that my brother had and I borrowed it when I was little and absolutely adored the story. And I loved the book and you could just never get it anywhere. I really wanted to rebuy it, but it was out of print. Couldn't get hold of it for love nor money. I asked in like a bookshop, you just could not get it. And then they released the 50th anniversary edition. Um, so I bought this for my son because I'd loved it. And I kind of was a bit worried that it wasn't as good as I remembered it as, but actually he loves it. And I wrote inside, happy first Christmas, the best gift we can give you is the love of books. This is one of mummy's favorites. Um, but this just is nostalgic of stealing books off of my brother, which I frequently did, because he had more books than me. So that's my OMG this song tag. It was really fun. Um, please check out other people's videos because everybody seems to have a blast doing this. Um, I'm going to tag Bookish Hamster and Katie Wilson, two great channels I've been enjoying lately. Um, and uh, anybody else who wants to have a go, please do. And don't feel the need to sing along just like everybody else lip syncs. It's just that I don't have the filters for not singing that other people have. <laughs> Please like if you did, please subscribe for more bookish videos and books about writing and I'll see you again for my next video. Bye! Well, look about, look about, look about, look about, ooh -wee.